What is happening, everyone? Welcome to another episode of KMRD Radio Stuff. Guys, today we're going to be talking about an antenna. It's been out for about a year now. I've got a lot of friends that have it, love it, swear by it. So let's take a look at the Buddy Stick Pro this time on KMRD Radio Stuff. Now guys, before we begin, I gotta give a big shout out to my friend Scott, KI5NPL from Ham Radio for Non-Techies. This is his antenna, he's letting me borrow it so we can test it out. So let's see what we think about it. Now the first thing I notice about this antenna is the size and weight. It's actually quite compact for an antenna that <laughs> is that big. Unlike some other loaded coil antennas, uh, they, Buddy Pole really thought of how they're going to fit it inside of a carry case, make it portable, and they did a fantastic job. You got a nice bag, it zips up, it's got slots and, and homes for everything, and they did a really, really good job, I like that. Now once you unzip the bag, you're gonna be presented with everything that you need to get this antenna on the air. You're gonna get coax, it's got RG58 coax, has BNC connectors on both sides, so be sure to remember, if your radio doesn't have BNC on it, make sure you have an adapter, a BNC to uh, PL259, otherwise you're gonna be up a certain creek without a paddle. Next, you're gonna have this Versa hub. This is what everything is going to connect to, the legs, the antenna, the coax, the counterpoise, everything connects to this Versa hub. Really, really cool design. Uh, it can be supported with either of these uh, tripod legs that you have to purchase separately unfortunately it doesn't come together but it also has a quarter by 20 thread on the bottom of it so if you have a tripod you can easily mount it to that instead of having to pay the 57 dollars for these legs now let's talk about these legs they come in uh, for for 57 dollars more than the already 199 dollars for the antenna you get three uh they're fiberglass uh, legs that have little stretch cord in them so they're actually very easy to deploy and they've got a little nub on the top that slides inside the Versa hub and then kind of holds it down if you will stupid easy to set up why they're $57 is beyond me I think that's a little overpriced but what do I know I think you should get more for that and I'll talk about that in a minute next you're presented with the loading coil itself which very, very easily attaches. You've got these two arms that are gonna extend it and kind of center load it. So you screw these two arms together, then you're gonna attach the loading coil, and then you're gonna screw on the actual telescopic whip for the antenna. Now the loading coil itself has obviously the coil of wire around it, and then there's three little slots where you can insert the taps and screw them down and tighten them up. Makes it very easy to quickly attach a tap and get on the air, get it tuned up. One con about this, I wish there were more of these slots, more places to tap in. Uh, I tried using this for having multi-taps. I had three on here. I was trying to tune 15, 17, and 20. I could get 15 and 17 to tune fairly well. 20 meters, eh, it was a struggle. There wasn't really a good tap to put this, and the other taps were kind of in the way of where I would actually want to tap it. I wish they would have put more uh, spaces to actually tap, more grooves in there. But uh, So I ended up taking them all off. I was hoping I could run this multi-tap. You could probably get away with two taps, three taps, and having multi-band. Yeah, it was a bit of a stretch for me. I, I don't recommend doing it that way. However, when you do have one tap on there, it is stupid easy to get up and running. As far as setup time with this antenna, it literally took me about two minutes to get all of this set up. Now, there's a caveat to that. Two minutes is to physically put all the pieces together. You still need to run the counterpoise wire out. And this is a tuned, elevated counterpoise. So basically, you can tap this, extend it, leave it, no big deal. You don't ever need to fuss with this. The instructions say, like on 17 meters, you might need to collapse the whip. I didn't find that to be the case. Everything is tuned by the counterpoise. And here's where that caveat comes in, because it takes two minutes to set this up, <laughs> you're still going to be going back and forth between the counterpoise and your radio a few times, either shortening or lengthening, checking the SWR by keying up. I just key up on CW and check the SWR. And, uh, you know, similar to other loaded coil antennas, there is a little bit of back and forth. I, I haven't been able to just instantly reproduce my results of having a low SWR, but you can expect very low SWRs with this. For example, here's a reading I took on 15 meters. Our lowest SWR was 1.08 to 1. 
Doesn't really get much better than that. Here's another reading on 17 meters, we're 1.06 to 1. On 20 meters, I got uh, 1.09 to 1. It's fantastic, and it's, it's actually quite easy to tune. Again, it's gonna be similar to some other loaded coil antennas that you may have seen me use, where instead of tuning it at the coil, you're simply gonna run over and tune it at the wire. I actually kind of like tuning it at the wire because the wire is raised. <laughs> you don't have to get all the way down on your hands and knees to, to adjust it at the coil. So uh, it, it is nice in that regard. Now, also it can be very finicky depending on the height of the wire where, uh, where the counterpoise is. That can actually affect the SWR without, raise, without lengthening or shortening the counterpoise wire at all. Uh, <laughs> If it's this high, it'll be one SWR. If you lower it, you might can get a better SWR. I've actually found sometimes lowering the counterpoise and almost having it as a sloper going up to the Versa hub here, uh, I can actually achieve a lower SWR than if it's you know three feet off the ground. So maybe like two feet off the ground would be better. Realistically, I would say within 10 minutes, you can easily get this antenna out of the bag, set up, run the coax to your radio, get the counterpoise wire tuned, get everything up and running, and you're on the air. That's probably, that's, that's being very liberal, honestly. Uh, I, if, if, if it took you longer than 10 minutes, I'd say there's probably something wrong and you might need to retap the coil. It is very, very quick. Now changing bands, because I haven't been able to uh, get this multi-banded, you are gonna have to retap this, so either memorize what tap it's on or maybe make, get, a, get a Sharpie here or uh, like, something high visibility so you can mark it. They, the coil does have markings every five coils down, but it's only on one side. I wish they would have put it all the way around so you can actually, because sometimes you might have a, a tap here, sometimes you might have a tap here, sometimes you might have a tap here. So you've got to have a Sharpie or something to know where you can easily tap that coil again to reproduce those results early. So it's certainly not without its flaws, but the antenna definitely gets out. Now, as far as performance, this antenna gets out. I've, I've used this antenna before, so I already kind of know what it's capable of. I've done whisper tests. You can check out the video here uh, in terms of like the directionality of the counterpoise. You can, you can kind of make it a little bit directional, some. But uh, I just got on the air. I got 15 contacts in nine minutes, got the park activated, no problem. Uh, got all the way to the East Coast, all the way to the West Coast, and a couple states in between. A little bit more omnidirectional than my NFED half wave, which makes sense because it's an omnidirectional vertical antenna. So I found that uh, it's a little more balanced between like the East Coast and West Coast stations that I get where uh, typically on an NFED half wave, I'm gonna get a lot of East Coast and some West Coast. I get a little bit more West Coast with this, just again, because of the omnidirectionality of the antenna. So uh, very, very easy to get on the air, very easy to, to get out and make contacts. I kind of get what the hype is about now with this antenna, again, being so lightweight, being so easy to get on the air. I was very hesitant about this and, and reluctant about this antenna because I had used it before. Uh, Jason from Ham Radio 2.0 lent me his and, and I honestly played with it for, for five or 10 minutes and, and just got so frustrated with the raised counterpoise wire, which brings up uh, really one of the, the glaring cons of this antenna. And why Buddy Pole doesn't do this is beyond me. So you can buy this antenna with the Versa Hub and the poles and the, and the coil and the wire and everything for $200. For another $57, you can now get these fiberglass uh, legs, okay? They still don't sell anything to actually raise the counterpoise wire, which drives me up the wall. So a lot of people have resorted to buying this. I think it's like a $3 fence post stake that you can pick up from a home improvement store. So they're bringing that and now you've got this ginormous, uh, it's probably three or four feet total in length all said and done, that completely negates the portability of this antenna. Everything packs up into this little bag and now you gotta carry this big stupid stick with you. What they should do is create something to raise the counterpoise wire. And what they could do is use these same legs Make a little hub for him to go into so you just you have a bipod. And then you could hang the counterpoise wire off of that bipod and lean it back so the, so the tension from the wire is gonna basically hold the, the, 
the counterpoise wire up and the legs and everything so they don't fall down, much like I have done with these sticks over here. Sticks, literal sticks that I found on the ground. For $57 extra to pay for these legs, I should at least get something to hold up the counterpoise that's gonna fit inside that bag. There is extra room in that bag to put a couple more of these things. So I, I think that's a glaring oversight on Buddy Pole's part. Not necessarily a deal breaker, but for $57 for three fiberglass legs, I think that's a little ridiculous. That's just me. The fact that you can't use this antenna as intended right out of the bag kind of bothers me. It's not a deal breaker. I literally picked up some sticks and I made it work, but what if there aren't any sticks around? What if you're just in your backyard and you're not in the middle of a forest and you don't have sticks laying around? What are you gonna do? You gotta go get that tent stake. Or what if you're in the middle of the desert? There are no sticks in the desert because there's nothing in the desert. What are you gonna use? Now you gotta carry that big stick. So I wish they'd come up with a solution uh, and include it with the legs. That's just my opinion. But uh, other than that, I have really nothing but good things to say about this antenna. I'm not gonna lie, I kinda wanna see uh, what Scott might want in trade. <laughs> because I kind of do want this antenna now. But uh, wanted to give just a, a very open, honest viewpoint of this antenna. Like I said, I have a lot of friends that own this antenna. They speak very highly of it. I didn't get the hype. I kind of do now because it's just so darn easy to set up. So that's about all I have to say about the Buddy Stick Pro. I want to thank everyone for watching. If you've got questions or comments, experience with this antenna, or any tips you can share with the community, drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. Guys, you can follow me on Twitter at K8MRD. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And we will see you again on another episode of K8MRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.